Hi Flosstube, it's Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm here to share with you how to make a floss ring tag and also how to make a pin cushion. Um, these are very simple projects. They bling up your floss ring if you use rings for your to keep your flosses together in a kitted up project. And I find the pin cushion to be one of the best tools that I have as a, as a stitcher. And they're simple to make. Um, you don't have to buy them from somewhere. You can make them and use them and really delight in having them in your handbag of tricks, I guess. So let's get started. So for okay. our floss tag, we're going to cut a three inch by four inch square, just like this one. You need two of them. So I'm going to, I've been asked, how do you cut, make your cuts? How do you cut them? And I use my large quadrant quilting see-through ruler, or square, whatever you want to call it. And I line it up right along the edge. And you make sure you always measure twice and cut once. I use a Mac knife, um, um, just a utility knife. I got this, I think, at Michael's or Walmart, one of the two. Um, and you just make your cut. You have to cut through a couple of times to get it apart. This one is going to be saved. I save everything. Now we're going to cut, that was the three inch width, and now we're going to do the four inch length. Again, you measure twice, cut once. Okay, I throw these things away. All right, so we have our two squares and we make sure that they match up and they do match up. They're perfectly flush on all the sides. Now then, to make the floss tag, I want it to look like a tag. So what I do is I take one of these and I measure down one inch from the top. Again, we're going to measure twice. That's what one, where one inch is and I'm going to make just a little, little pencil mark on either side. Okay? This is three inches, right? So I'm going to square this on my cutting board. This is a self-healing cutting mat that you can get at any Joann's. Use your 50% off. Mine is a large one. It's like, uh, I don't know, what is it? It is three yards by two yards. And what I do is you measure, you center it. This is three inches. So two, you're gonna go in one inch on either side and you're gonna make a little mark, okay? All right. Now then, once you have your marks made on the corners, just like that, you're going to take your square and you're going to line up the edges of this mark and this mark and you're going to make your cut okay this is your first cut now then to get this edge to perfectly match its mate what I do is I line them up like this okay you can see there where the cut is and I place it down keeping it together and I make my cut okay then to get these sides the same angle as the other sides I put them to I just did you see what I did there I had so here we start I'm going to take one and flip it and now I can cut that side and I can cut this side and everything will match up and line up perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. There we go. We got our tag shape. Okay. All right. Now then, what I'm going to do next is I have an overspray piece of cardboard and we're going to spray these lightly. With okay. Allie's tacky, tacky spray, here it is, 
and you just want to lightly spray it all over make sure it's like almost like your spray painting make sure all the edges all the top all the top not the edges all the top is sprayed okay now then you want to wait a little bit because we don't want this wet we want this tacky and right now they're tacky I mean they're right now they're wet so we're going to wait until these get tacky and how I do that is I shake them now we're going to remove this because I don't need this because I'm done spraying okay now then these are tacky and I'm using scraps these are what my scrap my scraps are that I'm going to make my floss tag out of and you can see they truly are scraps I'm going to put the black gingham on the bottom and the bees on the top okay so you just put it now with a gingham you want to make sure that you get your pattern straight that it's not crooked or anything and you want to go up about um, two inches from the bottom okay so I'm, I've got this lined up two inches make sure the pattern is straight and then rub 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 not on this top because this top is tacky okay take your B pattern and um, find a place that's pretty that you want it let's see I want mine hmm. I want that B right there No, I don't. Let's see. I want to put it like this because I don't want the hole that I'm going to punch in the middle of my B. Okay, so I'm going to have an upside down B. Okay, now there's overlap here, okay? And it's okay. Okay, now then, that's good and adhered. Let's do our other one. Again, we're going up two inches from the bottom with our black okay and then we're going to do our B let's see I'm going to make this one going down too okay all right flip them over now then, you can rotary cut these or you can um, cut cut them with a scissors. I'll just, most people have scissors, so I'll just do a scissor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about a half of an inch, three-fourths of an inch from the edge on all sides. Okay. Oh, I forgot my corner. All right. Throw these away because we're not going to be able to make anything out of those scraps anymore. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the second one. Just about a half to three-fourths of an inch all the way around. You don't have to measure it. Just enough that we're going to fold them over on the edge and glue down. Okay, throw those scraps away. All right. Now then, before we start gluing this down, I would like to get rid of this extra little bit that we have on the front. And so I am just going to glue, I mean, cut along there. It doesn't have to be fancy because we're going to be hiding this. But you want it kind of... Um, close okay we'll do let's see do I have much of the I do have so I'm going to do the same thing to this one okay all right so there's there's what it looks like on the front okay all right 
We're going to flip it over and we're going to get tacky glue upside down in my jar like I told you because then it's always ready and I don't have to shake it down. Now then, when I you, I, you always want to make your edges clean so I always wipe off my tip. Okay. So, we're just going to go all around lightly the outside of our squares, or I mean our tag. And we're going to just fold this over and glue it to the back. Now you just want to fold it over to tack it down. We'll go back and make sure everything is not bulky in a minute, but I just want to make sure everything's mounted on here first. Okay, we can clip this. We can clip this. We can clip this little guy. All we're doing is debulking the inside. That's it. Then you might just want to put a, just a little dab of glue through there. You're going to get it on your fingers and you're just going to kind of make that all smooth, kind of shellac it on there. Okay, now we're going to play with this bottom part. Put a little, to fold up, you're going to wrap it like a package. Just put a little bit of dab of glue. You're going to fold it just a little bit in so that it looks like a package, like you're making a package. Okay. Put glue on those edges just across the bottom and fold up. Okay, there's what it looks like on the front. This is what it looks like on the back, okay? Okay, wipe your fingers because you're going to have glue all over them and you don't want to get glue on your other projects. So I have a wet towel that I keep, or damp, not wet, that I keep on my lap and I keep my fingers clean that way. We're going to do the same thing to this one, but I forgot to snip this corner. Okay, so I had already added glue. You can tell, I think, that there's glue on there. We're just going to do the same thing. This one I cut a little close because I had it close because of the where I wanted the B to be on my tag. So Okay, this one really doesn't have, since I cut the, and then maybe we can cut this guy a little right there. Well, and here's one, right here, this little snipper, right there. Okay, now we'll do the same thing to the bottom, just a little dab of glue, just a little smear. We're going to wrap our package, move it in just a little bit. Like we're wrapping a package. See? Wrapping a package. This one needs to be a little bit more in. And the reason I do that is when you fold it up, it won't hang out the sides here. A smooth finish. That's what you always are going for. A smooth finish. Clip our stragglies here that we have. Okay, we're going to wipe our fingers. Now then, 
I'm going to pull it back around to the front. Check for purse. I have like, you know, some stragglies. Get the straggly threads off. All right, now then. We didn't sew this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add some rickrack, okay? And I have some scrap piece of rickrack rick here. Not very big, and I always save these for situations such as this where you just need a little bit. What we're going to do is go right across the top like this and that's going to hide that seam. How are we going to get that to stay? Well, we're going to run a line of glue across there. And Aline's always cures, dries clear so you don't have to be afraid to do this. You're just going to put some back here because we're going to wrap it, wrap it around and we're straight across. And I'm generous because um, we want it to, to stick. So you start on this side, you wrap it around. end it there. Okay. And these will stay down once you get it sandwiched, but here's what it looks like. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Here's what it looks like, okay? We're gonna do the same thing to the other one. I wanna make sure that I kinda of line it up good. Oh, I am. I need to get those things to stay down. Okay, same thing. A line across the top, on the sides, and then just a little bit on the back. throw this away because I'm not going to ever have a use for that short of a piece. Kind of make sure that this is going to line up. It is. Okay, so now you want to pull these tight. Make sure they're on the front good. You're going to glue all. Oh, see I didn't put it in my jar. Now I have to shake it down. That's why you put it in the jar. See, I didn't do that. I'd be spending my whole day shaking glue down. Okay, this is enough to get it started. I'm just gonna smear it around with my finger Or you can use a paintbrush. I should, probably should have gotten my paintbrush over here, but I do this a lot. My, <laughs> use my finger. Okay, we're gonna let that get tacky, okay? And while that's getting tacky, we're going to get my, uh, and I have crocodile. my crocodile. That's what these are. You find them in the scrapbooking aisle. I'm going to, I want my hole to be about at the end of this flower, so I'm going to use the 3 16th bite, and you put it down to about where you want it, you want to center it, and you take your bite, and that made a hole, if you can see the hole. Okay, so now then, what I'm going to do is I get my grommet and I like these little um, antique brass they look like flowers you can get them at Michaels in the 
sewing sec section and all you're going to do is push that through to the other side like that okay and then you're going to use your your rubber part and you put the you put it on there like that so and then squeeze it and that just flattens that grommet in there okay all right so to get this side to match this side I put it against each other and I just draw a little hole right there I mark it and then I go in and cut I didn't put glue at the top of this so I go in with my 3 16 of inch <laughs> but I have a little part glue in here okay so I'm gonna get my 3 16 inch I'm gonna find the drawing and I'm gonna snap it okay and I'm going to do the same thing. Push my grommet in. And then I'm going to flatten it. Okay. Now then, let me get my, because I've made a mess here. I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to put some more glue and I'm going to paint just very lightly around all the edges, okay? need anything on this side. Pull to make sure that your um, rickrack is tight. Place this together just so like this making sure all those edges are tight together and that your hole, your grommets meet up. I'm going to put this inside of a Ziploc bag and press them between heavy objects and then we'll be back to make our um, pin cushion okay so just all right we're back to make a pin cushion all right I've got my scraps cut that I'm going to use these are three inch squares okay that's all these are how did I cut them I used my large quadrant ruler and my rotary blade cutting blade and I just measured three inch three inches and cut my three inch squares okay um, now we're going to make our pin cushion but when we make our pin cushion we need to lay it out to figure out how we want it to look I don't want the bees together so I'm going to make the bees catty corner to each other and so our black on one side and our in our other um, polka dotted yellow piece on the other side so I think this is how I want it to look we're going to sew one end together put the pretty sides together you can pin if you want to I'm not going to I'm using a fourth of an inch seam allowance and um, I have it threaded with black thread you can use yellow thread but since black is a common theme on all the pieces I'm just using black Okay, I'm going to drop my presser foot. I'm going to sink my needle. I'm going to begin a couple stitches. Then I'm going to reverse to lock the seam. And then go all the way to the end, right along the edge of the fabric. Stop right before the end, reverse to lock, and then we're straight on out. There we go clip your, your um, trailing threads. Set that to the side. 
Okay, now we're going to put the pretty sides together of these two. Again, you can line, you can pin it if you want to. I'm not going to. Get them all flush, put them down, drop your presser foot right along the edge of the material, sink your needle, begin a couple stitches, stop, return a couple stitches, lock those stitches, and then straight out the bottom, along the edge, stop before the edge to lock the stitches. Okay. So now then, when you sew, you always want to press open your seams, okay? That's what, I mean, that's good sewing technique. You just want to press these open. So I'm going to go over to the iron, and I'm going to press these seams open on both of these, and then we're going to come back and sew them together and have the top of our pin cushion. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I press open my seams. Okay, now we're going to sew this piece to this piece. Remember, you don't, I don't want the bees together like this, okay? I want the bees in opposite corners. So make sure you align it. You're gonna put, put pretty sides together. Now then, you want to make sure that your seams are together. So how I do that is I put them together and I pin them on one side and then I follow, open it up and I follow the seam all the way down to make sure that they're perfectly aligned and you can place a pin there but I'm going to sew this side so I'm just going to keep it together with my fingers Okay, so I've got it on my machine. I drop my presser foot, drop my needle, begin sewing, reverse to lock the seam, and then go straight along the edge. Clean your threads. you go you can see that that's the seams are perfect aligned don't have not perfectly aligned square seams I don't like that it makes me nervous so there we go now then I'm gonna press this side open and we're gonna I'm gonna add some interfacing I'm gonna press the seam open and then I'm gonna put interfacing on here and I'm gonna get my bottom piece which is this, okay? And I'm gonna put interfacing on it. And then we're gonna sew this together All right. to make a pin cushion. So I have, I pressed my seams open and I added the interfacing to the bottom. This is the bottom of the pin cushion and this is the top, okay? All right, the interfacing I use is P44F. Okay, it's a light, fusible clothing interfacing. It's not a craft interfacing. It's very light. It's not doesn't make this like stiff. That's what I use in all of my, all of my sewing is for finishing for smalls. Is P forty four F by Pellon. Okay, so we're gonna construct this pin cushion. We're going to put pretty sides together, okay? And just align the seams. On one edge, I'm going to put um, just one pin just to hold it, okay? All right, so we're going to start halfway down. Sink my needle. Halfway in the middle, okay? Because we're going to leave a space to turn out and fill with our stuff. So, Sink your needle, begin, do a couple stitches, reverse and go back a couple stitches. Then go all the way to the end and then reverse and back. That just reinforces the stitches. It allows you to make 
completely perfect corners. Begin again, go back to, once you cross that thread, go back to reinforce that corner, go all the way to the end, right along that edge of the material. Reverse at the end, and pull it, okay, so far. And you can see, see how that reinforces that corner. All my squares, all my pillows, I do that. And it, that allows me to poke out those corners. We do not want curvy okay. corners. Okay, sink your needle. I'm just going to go ahead and finish all of this because you know what I'm doing. I mean, so you can see me. Now then, this is our last side, and we want to leave about a two inch space, so I'm only going to sew to about right there. Sink your needle, begin, reinforce that corner, go, stop, and then reinforce that corner. All right, now. We're going to clip all our threads, but on the opening where we're going to turn out. So I'm clipping the threads and the corners. Okay. I'm going to go right at a diagonal on that corner. Right at a diagonal on that corner. right at a diagonal on this corner. You don't want to cut into the corner, but you want to cut right across it. Okay? Now then, I'm going to go because I have learned that if you press open all of these seams all the way around there, that's going to make each of these corners be completely at right angles. And that's what we want. We want completely right edged corners because Bonna does not like round corners. No, mm. it's a pet peeve, okay? All right, so let me do that and I'll all be right. right back. I'm back. I have ironed open all my seams on my pin cushion and you can see, this is even when I do small pillows and I tried to tell you all that when I was doing the small tuck pillow tutorial, I'm trying to make be funny about my corners, but that really truly does bother me. And, um, you know, it's just, it just bob, it just bothers me. I'm sorry, people. It just, it just bothers me. <laughs> so you want corners that are, are going to be right angles. So I have all of these seams pressed open. I'm going to turn out. What is turn out? Well, I'm going to turn the inside to the outside. And how I do that is I go all the way, push that far corner in, and start pulling. Okay? Just work it out gently. You don't want to be real rough or you'll tear your open corner poker out. Or my emery, this is like bamboo corner poker outer. I don't know what it's called. You see, I'm, I'm pre, I'm, I'm really putting some, look at that corner. Go all along the seam. You run your, your 
corner bamboo tool all the way along the seam to press that seam out, to poke it out, get to the corner, make your corner. See that corner? Run it from one corner all along the seam to the next corner. Now you want to be gentle because it will go through the seam, but we've reinforced our corners so we can do some pretty decent pressure all along, okay? And so when you get done poking out all your corners, there you go, okay? I'm going to go iron this because I don't like the wrinkly that it gets when you pull it out. So let me go iron it. Okay, I'm back. Right back. I, you real quick press and see what a difference it gets it wrinkled. Makes. Why it gets wrinkled is because of the interfacing being um, forced through the opening. And if you don't get it out before you stuff it, it'll never get out. And it leaves it in perfect. Okay. Then, now then, Emery's expensive. We're not going to use emery. We're going to use crushed walnuts or lizard litter. And um, I just keep mine in a Tupperware box. And how you fill it is I use a funnel. And I've got my measuring cup. And I just fill it up. Fill it up. Fill it up. Um... You can do polyfill if you want to. The reason I like um, walnuts in my my finishing of pin cushions is that it gives it weight, and so it sets nicely on like um, an armchair or whatever. And it also holds your pins up, you know, your needles up, whatever your counting pins or your needles, whatever you're sticking in there. And um, I like that. Now then, you want to you want to fill this firmly, but you don't want you want don't want it like coming out the top because when we sew our blind stitch our our um, seam closed and then add a button in the middle, that'll press out the um, shells to all edges. So I try to like put my thumb and, and my forefinger in the middle where I'm going to put my button to see how. I want I want it a little bit looser. Okay, that's perfect. So I would say that's filled except for a half an inch to the top. That's that's about the perfect fill. Okay. So we're done with our crushed walnuts. We put that to the side. Now we're going to blind stitch our opening closed. Okay. My needle is threaded with black thread. It's just a single strand through the eye knotted on one end, okay? All right. So, so what you do is you bury, you take just a little bite, a little stitch inside the seam, okay? Inside the seam to hide your knot, okay? The knot is hidden. Now then, you hold this together, and we're starting on the outside. Our thread is on the outside, or the back side. So I'm just going to ride along the, ed, the fold of that material on the other side. You push it through, okay? And you pull it. Then on the other side, you're going to go directly across from that where the thread comes out on the top, and you're going to just take a little stitch right in that seam. Tiny stitches, okay? And you just take it then right across on the top of the seam, on the top, the top material in the seam, in the fold. Make a, make a, take a small stitch, pull right across. Now we're on the bottom, we're going to go to the yellow material on the bottom, a little stitch. And pull it. 
I'm going to take a couple stitches and then I'm going to show you how it looks. Okay. I've taken some blind stitches here and I just want you to see, see how that is. It's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Just in the top edge of that seam, of that folded over material, that's where you put those stitches. Back on one side, then across to the other this side, and then down, back. Okay, now look what happens when I pull it. See? That's why it's called a blind stitch. All right. I've got this much left to go. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so my blind stitch, I blind stitched the whole opening closed. If you can see it. This is still attached and people wonder how do you end your thread. So what you do or what I do is I go underneath the last stitch, okay? And I pull that out, but I leave a small loop. See that? A small loop. And I'm going to go through the loop once, go through the loop twice like a lasso, and that makes a knot, and then I pull it, and I Make, so that's the knot, and then I'm going to go down in the seam, come out the back side, and pull it down to hide the knot in the seam. Then you just go about one thread of the material back and out the seam. So you can, can't see it, but there's a little stitch taken there and you clip it and that holds it. That holds the, the that holds the um, knot inside the seam and it won't ever come out. Okay? Alright. So now then what we do next is we get a button and we put that in the middle and make some stitches to make this all firm and all of the um, walnuts will go all the way to the edge to make a very nice sturdy pin cushion. Let me get my needle and my new thread set up and I'll be right back. I got my needle, I got my thread. There is a double thread in here with a very pretty large knot on the end, okay? I'm going to flatten this and I'm going to eye the, where the middle is, okay? And then you're going to come up in the very center of the seam where the, all four of those seams meet, okay? All four of the material meet. You're going to come up right in the center of that. All right? Pull it. All right. I have a black button. Just thread it on there. Center it in the middle of where all those meet and take your first stitch down to the bottom. And you want to come out about where your needle, where you left your knot at. Now, on the top I have a four hole button. On the bottom I only like to have a two hole button, okay? So thread your button on there and then take your first stitch on that button and come up in one of the holes of the button on the top. Okay. And then you want to check both sides. That's good. And you kind of want to be firm. Now you don't want to be real firm to where you're going to pull the whole thing out of there but um, or break your thread. But you want to be firm. So now you got your finger on both sides and you just keep, keep taking your stitches and I do quite a few and um, then we'll end it off. Let me get that done. Let me, you don't want to sit here and watch me sew the button on, but you just want to make sure that it's tightly sewn and then end off. Okay. Make a knot and bury it 
underneath your button inside the middle okay let me do that and we'll come back with our finished pin cushion just a moment all right now then what's going to happen now is we've got this sewn in um, I've probably gone up and down uh, 15 times now then on my last to end my thread what I do is I come up I take the needle out the side of the button okay then I hold this while making a couple of loops around okay the button so I've got my loop and I'm going to go wrap my thread around here a couple of times, okay? Now then, I'm going to go back and do my lasso knot around the loop, okay? And then I'm just going to pull that tight. And that secured it. And while I was doing the knot, my lasso knot, I was pulling to make that tight between the two things and then just to make sure that everything is really tied and it's going to stay good I do it again so I have my loop I'm going around my button twice I go back into my my loop to make a knot one two Okay, and then I pull it. Okay, then you're just going to clip your thread. And voila! You've got your pin cushion. Alright, and it's very firm and you can see that your needles hold up very nicely pins whatever and it's got weight and it'll set very nicely on an armchair okay, okay. So there's your pin cushion. here is our floss tag I attached the ring you can see I've got some just to show you what it looks like if you have it kitted with um, DMC flosses or over dies or thread drops um, however you use your threads this if you keep your kits together if you kit your together this floss tag just kind of blings your floss ring <laughs> and here is the pin cushion and they make a cute set don't they really cute all right I guess that does it I hope you enjoyed Get out this there and tutorial. make yourself a floss tag and a pin cushion and have a great day